All right, so I got another Themis video today. Um, I wanted to do a shorter one talking about um, dealing with the gun in your day-to-day -day operation of the tool. Okay, so so first thing to understand about this particular Themis is that it has a a fairly specialized gun configuration. So it has an XFEG as well as a monochromator. So basically, um, your options for the gun on a Themis are with or without monochromator, and then SFEG or XFEG. And so the fully loaded one is an XFEG with a monochromator. And so as a result of that, um, there's a few things you have to understand regarding your day-to-day instrument operation. So I already went through and applied um, the alignment file. Um, and then what I have is I went to the beam settings and I have my C3 lens off. Okay. So when you're doing when you're doing your monochromator slash gun adjustments, you want to, you know, be in this configuration. Okay. You want your C3 lens off to make it easier. Okay, so, so there is a, um, if we go to this alignments tab here, there is a bunch of alignments you can do for the gun. Okay, um, again, this in, in your day-to-day -day operation, this really isn't necessary. Okay, um, you can do these once and then you can bury this um, in a FEG register, right, which is what I normally do. Okay, and again, that's how I use the FEG registers and I have a video about that. Um, those of you who may or may not have seen it, is I only use it basically to recall gun settings, okay? The thing you have to understand, if you have a monochromator with an XFEG, is is what's called the monochromator shift is going to vary very continuously, um, really over a matter of hours, okay? So even if you save a FEG register here, because of the monochromator shift, even if you go ahead and apply it, it's probably not going to, you know, give you a properly uh, centered monochromator. Okay, so if we look at this, just let me move to a fresh area here. So we're over basically, basically nothing. Okay, so first of all, okay, I'm going counterclockwise from crossover here. Okay, which is what you want to do in this case with the C3 lens off. I've got a little bit of astigmatism here, so I can go ahead and correct that with the condenser just to make that a little more pleasing on the eyeballs. Let's go a little closer. There we go. This isn't strictly necessary, but just makes it a little easier to see everything. Okay, there we go. So that's tuned up really good. Okay, so now uh, there's basically two things you have to adjust during your your day-to-day -day operation with a, a monochromator with an XFEG, okay? And they are the monochromator shift and the monochromator focus. So normally the, the panel you want here is the monochromator tune control panel. I normally have it here in beam, um, but because of the, the way the camera is, is fudging with the pixel resolution, it's not in here anymore. I have to pull it up from over here. Okay. <clears throat> so um, with an XFEG and a monochromator, you no longer have a discrete gun lens. Okay. You have a gun lens that has a continuous value of focus here. Okay. And it goes basically from negative to positive. So if I activate focus and shift, now my intensity knob is adjusting the gun lens, okay, otherwise known as the focus, and my um, multifunction knobs are adjusting the shift for the monochromator, as you can see down here. Okay, so as I take the intensity knob and I go towards zero, as we get to zero, we're going to see the beam come to a crossover, and this is the this is the monochromator. Uh, focus. So you can see it's a little bit off. That can be recalibrated. It's not terribly important for this. Okay. So 
So now we have the entire beam basically coming through the um, condenser aperture. Okay. Uh, from here, okay, depending on how you're going to use the microscope, obviously this really doesn't help us much. Okay. Um, for our day-to-day -day operation. Now, of course, the, the monochromator is not actually on right now. Okay, you can see over here it's it's unfiltered, meaning we're not actually dispersing the electrons, um, otherwise known as filtering, right? So the monochromator is not actually filtering the electrons, but it still has you know deflectors and whatnot that's inside of it, and it's still part of the gun. Okay, so obviously this isn't really useful for you know imaging, right? So we have to defocus it. Okay, so we can go either positive or negative. Um, if you're going to do stem, better to go on the positive side. Okay, so if I go positive here, now you can see, okay, when I spread the beam out, I'm not centered inside the C2 aperture. Okay, so this is where your monochromator shifts come into play here. And the way I like to do this is just basically barely adjust it till you can kind of see the edges sit inside the aperture and then from there you can spread it out as much as you want okay so normally i put this at around 40. Um, with the 70 micron c2 aperture that gives me a a stem current usually around 20 25 picometers okay which is which is sufficient for that i'm using the trackball now not the monochromator shift okay if you're going to do regular imaging though you want to go on the other side Okay, you want to go negative, so go negative, and same thing though, okay, you're going to need to adjust the shifts to make sure it's centered inside the aperture, basically it is right there, and then set it to whatever value you want, okay. So now, and again, I usually, I use, usually negative 40, okay, so 40 either way, just negative versus positive, this gives me about a nano amp and a half for the current okay at spot size three and uh, that's usually you know pretty good for uh, for doing conventional work okay so this is obviously the manual way to do this now this will stay basically okay for you know a few like a couple you know, maybe two three hours at some point the shifts are gonna come into you know they're gonna drift and you'll have to redo this again okay but usually during a typical session you set this at the beginning and it'll you know be okay um, but if you go several hours you'll probably have to do this again okay so there is also a way to do this manually okay in addition to or not manually sorry uh, automated okay in addition to how I'm doing it now okay so if we look for instance I'm gonna turn these off okay and I'm going to set the tem fag register here Okay, so it's going to recall a shift and a monochromator focus, and that's also going to do a normalization here. Sorry, I think I just bumped the mic. This takes about a minute to do. But what we're probably going to find here is that the monochromator is not going to be centered anymore. Okay. Um, the gun lens should be at the value we want it to be, about negative 40, but it's not going to be centered, okay? So we can tell it to um, to center using an automated method. All right, should be getting close. All right, there we go. Uh, so this is actually not too bad, uh, not too bad off. Okay. Um, what's more typical though is to see something like this, right, where you know part of the beam is cut off. Okay. So if this happens, right, if you don't want to do this manually, okay, find the regular monochromator panel and click center. Okay. And then what will happen is the system will do an automatic adjustment of the shifts. Okay, to try and maximize the beam current here. And it uses that as its criterion for centering of the monochromator. And this is pretty accurate. Um, again, you'll notice I'm over 
basically entirely transmissive area, right? You don't want to be over something that you know the beam can't get through. Okay, but this also will work will work well. Um, we can try it with the the stem version here. We can set it in stem. And you can see now the focus went positive. Almost done. I have seen the instrument get hung up while doing this, so let's hope that doesn't happen right now. It shouldn't. Um, okay, all right. So this seems to have worked pretty well, but just just for the sake of argument here, let's go ahead and run the centering routine. And this was our initial current, so we'll see what we get here. All right, so not too bad. Basically the same number. Okay, so if we check the automated against the manual here. Let's see what we get. So there's the edges. Yeah, so basically we're we're pretty good here, okay? So that centering routine works really well. Um, again, you know, I'm recalling I'm recalling basically a focus here, okay? But then the shifts might be off, so then you can use centering to properly center the monochromator. All right, and so that's what you have to understand um, when you do your day-to-day -day operation of the microscope. Now, the other thing that's really um, helpful here, if you have, again, this configuration, the XFEG with the monochromator, is if I go into STEM mode now, all right, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to get out of free control into probe mode, Okay, so now let me turn this off here. Okay, so now I've got my direct disc. Okay, I'm over just like carbon right now. Beam's not scanning. Okay, so the screen current here is basically my beam current. If I go to my monochromator tune here and I click focus without adjusting, say, the spot size, okay, with making no adjustments to any of the lenses. I can use this to dial in any current I want, okay? So if I want to get 400 picoamps, for instance, I can do it, okay? Without doing anything to the spot size. Again, this is only if you have a continuously adjustable gun lens, okay? Which I believe is only with the XFEG and a monochromator. But this allows you to literally dial in a current. Um, this is very useful, like we saw when we were doing the corrector tuning, if you want to get 200 picoamps specifically, but it's also useful um, when we're doing EDS, which eventually I will show you, because um, usually you want more current than, you know, 25 or 20 picoamps for doing EDS. So you can very quickly just alter the, the gun lens focus here and um, get a current that's a little more conducive to performing EDS, okay? All right, so I'll go ahead and put this back at 40. So you can again see what that was giving us before, about 25-ish picoamps. All right, get back out of STEM mode here. The, the monochromator shifts and all that, that should be fine switching between modes um, in terms of like, yeah, like the shift. Um, that shouldn't be an issue when you swap modes. Um, so that's not something you have to redo necessarily when you go from TEM mode into STEM mode. Oops, there we go.
we go. All right, so that's just a quick video I wanted to do, uh, kind of covering uh, use of the <clears throat> use of the gun on the system in a little more uh, detail. Um, obviously, at some point I will do a video that actually talks about using the filtering capability of the monochromator, where we actually filter out the electrons that aren't going 200 kilovolt uh, keV. Okay, but right now we're not doing that. We're we're in what's called unfiltered mode. Right, and uh, with that, I will look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Go ahead and pop back in the room here and stop everything. All right, thanks, guys. I'll see you again soon.